You may not know it, but you could have a superpower. When you're sick, or even when you're well, information and camaraderie help. And get this, research shows that a small community of people has access to better health information than most individuals alone, more up-to-date and relevant to their situation. What would you do to have yourself and your family be part of this group? The superpower that they have is what we are calling peer-to-peer health advice. And the good news is there's no money involved. Absolutely everyone can join. However, there can be a few barriers. Today, we're going to help you overcome those barriers and get started. My name is Susanna Fox. I work to improve the health and welfare of people, most recently as the Chief Technology Officer at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Think about the last time you got sick or had a significant health issue. I'm guessing you probably turned to the traditional caregivers, a healthcare professional like a doctor or nurse, or a loved one. A Pew Research survey found that 7 in 10 U.S. adults say they engaged their care provider last time they were sick, and 6 in 10 say they turned to a friend or a family member. However, a smaller group, about 1 in 4, did something different. They talked with someone who had been through a similar experience. That group likely got some very useful information, especially if they were dealing with illness or injury that sticks around for a while. Peers for Progress, an advocacy organization, evaluated 20 studies of diabetes management and found 14 showing that participants in peer-to-peer healthcare programs lowered what's called their HbA1c by nearly a full point. The HbA1c is a two- to three-month measurement of blood sugar, and this improvement could translate into an over 35% reduction in disease in people's kidneys, heart, or eyes. It's important to note that peer-to-peer health advice is not a new skill. I think most of us are used to engaging in peer advice for everyday situations, like asking friends and neighbors about a good mechanic or who cuts their hair. Fellow moms are often experts and are a superb example of mixing practical advice with emotional support. Peer-to-peer health advice takes advantage of the same collective wisdom, but also requires some special skills on your part. Identifying your real questions, being honest, asking for help, these all sound simple, but it can be a real challenge when it's personal. At no other time in history have we been able to communicate across the world in an instant with anyone and everyone who has knowledge and experience to share. Never has it been so easy to collaborate, to compare notes, and to solve problems together. A barrier to peer advice online, and I think understandably, is fear. Fear that you won't understand what you find, or maybe even fear of what you will find. And can you trust it? Our experience is that communities will support you regardless of your knowledge level. Most people with a new health challenge start in the same place, facing a new health concern and being intimidated by the mountain of information out there. An experienced community is uniquely qualified to support you through a long journey or even just answer a quick question. They may not know your particular challenge, but they will likely have had a similar experience. As far as misinformation online, in 2006, researchers at the University of Texas analyzed the content of an online breast cancer forum for accuracy. They found that 10 of 4,600 postings were false but forum participants corrected seven of the misleading posts, often within a few hours. Only three posts containing misinformation went unchecked by the community. Not everything you read online is true, but that's the wonderful thing about a community. You can ask and listen, learn and read, and you can always vet ideas with your doctor or nursing team. Wendy Sue Swanson is a pediatrician, author, and chief of digital innovation at Seattle Children's Hospital. As a doctor, I can help you sort through the evidence on a test or a treatment, but I haven't actually had diabetes or many of the conditions I help families understand and treat. If you can find someone like you who has been there, who understands the nuances and is willing to share, this can be a huge advantage for informing your choices. Many health decisions are not right or wrong, just what's right for you. 
That's why Susanna's research has been so transformative. Talking with a peer who has been down similar paths may illuminate something absolutely new that I never would have been able to suggest. In my work as a pediatrician and as a doctor using digital tools, I know peers bring wisdom and evidence of all kinds that clinicians cannot always uncover. I've collected thousands of stories from people like those breast cancer patients who started their health journey in the dark. They are people who, when cornered in the healthcare maze, lit a match and called out, is there anyone else in here? They found a way out partly by making their own light stronger, but also by engaging the guiding light of each other. It can all start with a simple search online for a health topic like heart disease or knee replacement or parenting, plus the word blog. The internet isn't magical, and it is certainly capable of bias. But it can also be a source of information that is open 24-7. The advice is not always life-changing, but it is often life-improving. In the dark of night, you may find not only a friend, but a fellow advocate, and you may feel less alone. Information and camaraderie help. One common barrier is that you may believe your situation is completely unique. There's no one else like you with your family history, your values, and your particular combination of concerns and questions. That's true, but you also share surprising similarities with people facing the same condition. What you know may help them in unexpected ways. What they know may help you too. And there are many forces at work here. Sure, it's advice and support, but it's also social connectedness, mentorship, and navigation, and maybe just the gift of helping others. Feeling less alone, especially when fearful, ill, or in pain, can be a game changer. Erin Moore is the mother of four children, one of whom is living with cystic fibrosis, or CF. She is a member of a Facebook group called CF Mamas, about a thousand parents who talk online about everything from recipes to research updates. One day, Erin noticed that a mom who lives in the same city had shared that they were anxious about the effects of sedation required for her daughter's CT scan, scheduled for later that day. Erin quickly posted a reply to let her know that her son had undergone a CT scan without sedation at the same hospital, suggesting that she at least ask about that possibility. The mom saw Erin's note, and when she asked the clinical team, they readily agreed to try it. 30 minutes later, the mom posted on Facebook that the scan was complete, and she was on her way home with her daughter, not sitting in recovery, not waiting for a doctor's evaluation before discharge, but in the car, on their way home. (laughs) Because of social networks, the internet, and novel communities, we are connected to each other, unlike ever before in human history. This mom, like many moms, didn't even think to ask about the possibility of trying to do the scan without sedation, Erin recalls. Or perhaps she did, but the doctor who ordered the test was prompted to schedule time for sedation, and everyone just assumed that that's what had to happen. No one anticipated or even fully appreciated the value derived from that innocent post on Facebook to a group that a mom expected nothing more from than perhaps some empathy. Try it today. Search Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms for communities like people with diabetes, hashtag PWD, or caregiver stress. Do a Google or Bing search asking what you want to know. Don't worry if you don't see something useful on your first try. It's great just to get started thinking about how to tap into peer advice about your health. There are peers you have yet to meet and know. When it comes to your health, alongside your doctors and nurses, your community may really be your superpower. Thanks for listening.